JHK here for Sports Kita, and today I'm joined by one of Hawaii's finest UFC lightweight, Yancey Maderos. Yancey, thank you for coming on, man. How's life? Woke up on an island, bro. <laughs> Cannot complain about my first road problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely, man, definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when you step into the cage on May 22nd, you know, it'll be 15 months between fights. I've never would imagine that from you you know what i mean you're a guy that tries to step in there as as much as possible you know take me back to the yeah. the weeks after the lando venado fight you know what was going on in your mind i mean i felt like and just leaving it to the judges or the ref it's just that that's just that's always the gamble you know what i mean a loss a loss is a lesson and it's just more like what is, bro coming off a of three i'm like bro what the hell I'm like you know what is not popping off and it's just I'm just waiting, bro. You know what I mean? I'm just tired. Of, like, I just wait too much. I'm too passive. I'm just, like, I watch my last three fights, and I watch fights, like, when I first went to 170 or first came into UFC. Or even when I was fighting at 205, it's like, bro, I didn't give. Can I swear on this interviews? <laughs> I didn't give. I didn't give a fuck about anything, about that sense of, you know, and I'm still passionate, and I have my law spirit, but, like, you know, I was just watching my fights. I'm like, bro, why the hell am I waiting? The Gillespie fight, the Venata fight. And I'm just like, I really need to get back on this grind and just get back to how it was. I guess it was a chip, not a chip on my shoulder, but it's like I was like, I'm here to show up because I was always the smaller guy in 205 or 170. I was going back up and they thought I was like, what? I ain't got, you think I ain't got nothing? And then I hit these guys and either they staying away from me not trying to fight or they're holding on to me you know and that's where i'm just like i gotta that weight is over me waiting on myself and just the kid bro the kid is back and can't i can't that's that's the plan bro when after i after i lost to um after that loss with banana i was just like bro i hate leaving it in the judge's hands regardless on how you feel if you won the fight or you lost the fight it's just like bro, i hate leaving it to the officials and just like you've seen that with Matt. Like I've seen that with multiple multiple fighters. I don't want to name names, but you felt like there's bad calls with with the officials, and it's just. I think that's the, for some fighters that's the make and break. Yeah? And for me, it was just more like, nah, I don't want to leave it to them anymore. I mean, I'm here to entertain, and I know I give that to the fans, and I know UFC knows that in me. So it was just, hey, get back on the horse, and the, make sure the wait is over. And show and show and show whoever's next in front of you that that's what's up. Yeah, that's something that's important that you you pointed out is that the judges, man. Even right now, the last couple of events, there have been some fishy scorecards, man. There's some some wildness out there. Even with um the Korean uh fighter, man. Uh, uh what is it? Park last weekend, they one of the car one of the judges gave him a twenty eight twenty eight when he won every round and got a point deducted. That was a wild. Did you see that fight? I didn't. I didn't get to see that. But I heard. I, I, I seen the controversy and all yeah. the writing, you know, via yeah. social media and stuff. I was like, that's why I didn't even try and get into this politics mm-hmm. and all that. To me, it's all politics when it, when it comes to the judges, right? Like, but just don't leave it to them. Don't leave it to the judges. Like, it sucks, bro. I, I've been. I felt like I, you know, even the refs. I felt like I could have continued on things, but it's. I left it. To, I left it in their hands, right? And that's just, it's our job as a fighter, as a martial artist, to make sure that they don't get involved with what's in front of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, answer, you make your answers. You make your finish. You know, I don't want the judges and these refs. You know, the refs there to watch for my safety. I don't need him in there when I need to finish. And I don't need those judges dictating my fight. Not long after your last fight, COVID hit. You know, Hawaii, they went under some strict protocol. You know, how much has that affected your life and, and training the last year? Um, I mean, it's always, it, I feel like everybody has to go through adjustments, right? For this COVID, like I ain't going to complain about anything because we all, every single one of us had to make an adjustment because things changed and training, there was, there, bro, it was a lot of gyms closed down. So we had to connect and we had to trust ourselves and trust everyone around us to know that if we are training like how cleanly we're we're keeping with each other there's just all like oh oh you know like getting your partner getting one cough and all that you know there's all these things so it's everything so sensitive right like in the last year everything was so sensitive and then you know as as things went progressed throughout the year like the teams got better with understanding regardless and there wasn't anything about conspiracy or mass and all that bullshit like i said like i don't I don't deal with the politics. I deal with 
right now how we make things civil and that's what the year taught me this covid year right it taught me gratitude and how to keep things civil and if you ain't in, in in life if you ain't trying to serve somebody or if you ain't a parent trying to raise a good kid what else is there to do in life bro you seen what last year did for everybody like you couldn't you couldn't afford to just be greedy and take you have to learn how to give you have to learn how to make changes and those those are things that i definitely learned and i'm very grateful for that like last year was a very the covid year was a very um great adjustment for me to work on myself wholeheartedly in and outside the octagon and how i looked at things i mean my passion my perspective hasn't changed but my gratitude on knowing what like the people that are really here for me you know when it went in in it because it's like you have to be there for yourself and then you see all the people that really supported you that was really or at least i did so i'm very i'm very grateful because it was it was a discomforting year but it was also you know you never you never grow without discomfort so there's a lot of growth bro and i'm happy for it may 22nd i'm gonna show that yeah no doubt the community man around you how what how has it been man it, it must have been impacting the community oh, the, the businesses and everything right yeah yeah for the most part it was peaceful like but like then again there's a lot of politics and a lot of privileged people out here and just like everywhere in the world right politics and privilege privilege that's the two things i you know try to take in a lot like oh like oh if it's political you know i try and be civil about things not yet bro we can agree this to disagree we can dislike things and still you can dislike someone and still have a good positive you know what i mean energy with them it's just that was the thing like how do you stay sane with all this chaos outside like how do you stay seen in your bubble where it's training working living at home while everything else is being chaotic and hawaii did have its fair shares of ups and downs nothing near like other countries and you know the united states but bro like just gratitude bro i'm here <laughs> i'm still here you know i woke up warm not hungry what else what else what else is there to live for bro you know what I mean? like <laughs> puts everything so, into perspective yeah no it is it's a big perspective and i'm not like i'm very privileged you know like i'm not i'm not saying it's it's easy but you know people can be have my situation and feel shitty about shit or they could be happy about things or try their best to make their opportunities the best they can bro and that was the thing a lot of people didn't have opportunities right in the last year or less opportunities and it was more like okay that wasn't something i expected expectations bro i didn't expect anything i appreciated and accepted whatever was in front of me you're returning after 15 months was were there any other fights that were offered or did you have some things lined up some i had some um i had some some things I had to settle with my um with my coaches and whatnot during the fall and negotiations didn't fall through during fall and in December. I kinda recently signed with Iridium in, in the ending of fall, beginning of winter. And then just from that time we were just trying to get a good fight, a good venue and negotiations didn't fall through. So it just led to May twenty second. And yeah, bro, four fights in four years is pretty pretty um slow for me and I really wanna be more active, but I ain't trying to be greedy, you know, let me get this fight in. I was like, oh, yeah, let me fight three, four times a year. Let me just get two. Just two this year. I ain't going to try. You know, I'm grateful for this one. Um, I want to remain injury-free. That's the biggest thing, right? Like, I'm ready to fight anybody. It's always it's always those things that will, will pull me aside or any fighter, right, having those injuries. So May 22nd and then, you know, injury-free and keep as busy as possible. You got a guy, man, Demir. He, you know, he signed a contract. Yeah. He's ready to scrap. Yeah, yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on him and, and the style that he brings? Um, he's, bro, I, when it comes to UFC, I ain't taking nobody lightly. I've never took anyone lightly. I've never thought lesser of anybody. That's just the competition in front of me, bro. And that's just the, that's the role. I'm on this pad and that's what's in front, front of me. And I gotta, he has every, he has every, he has all the tools to be a great fighter. But he also has all the attributes to make me look great. You know, and that's what I need to show in this fight. I'm not saying he's not he's not going to be a good fighter, but I definitely believe that he has a style that I need to promote and show everybody, just like how I show in the gym, that, oh, this is the real Yancey. Like, the Yancey under the lights. And the Yancey in the gym is what I need to be showing, not the Yancey that's always in UFC. Like, everybody everybody knows that one, but the one in the gym is the one I need to shoot, um, show. And I think I'm here. Um, 
he's gonna show me he, he's gonna allow me to do that yeah definitely the stylistically now gracie technique I, I know you're there you're training hard you know that that team is is somewhat of a mystery though you know what i mean we know the fighters but the coaches man they never do any interviews they're just in there in the lab yeah. grinding man just talk about them and reveal something to us man give us something about them i mean you just really show that they're there for you you know what i mean they ain't there for it they ain't there for the recognition like my coaches could literally stop coaching MMA and cornering guys if that's if that's not what they wanted because they're there for us. It's like my my our love and our bond and our understanding with each other is so dope. Like especially with my with my cornermen, like they probably ain't got no contract with any of them. Zero contract from the time I started because they know our word is our bond. That's my value. That's our value. What 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 teams you know do that? Show me what's up with that. Who's really there for you? Right? You know what I mean? It's always about money. You know that, bro. If I told my coaches, like, bro, I can't afford to pay. Like, I really, they would be like, wow, like, it's all good, yeah. It's like, do what you gotta do. Take care of your family. Like, they're there for me wholeheartedly. How can I? How could that? How could I not have them in my corner? How could I not trust them with the with the way they talk when they're not even there for my? They're there for my well being. They ain't there for my money. You know, and that's that's why it's never left, and that's why we keep this small knit. We keep it small knit. And we keep it. We keep it like close like that. Like we ain't trying to. I'm very appreciative of my coaches, but we ain't over there trying to flaunt them because that's not what they want. They don't want to be the front man. They don't want to be like, oh, I'm the coach that has all the answers or this is where to come, right? It was an organic relationship that we built, me, Max, all the guys that train on the Gracie Technics. And we just have that understanding. It's not about, it's more like family, right? Like you ain't repping your mom and your dad out all the time. Like, oh yeah, look, my mom, my dad, right? They're the best. I'm, of course they are. They, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. I feel like you got to, great connection you good you got some you know whoever raised you is good and that's the same thing with our with our coach you know what i mean that's our family like i said brad like what 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 fighters you know and coaches you know get in a relationship where there's no written contract and it's just your word is your bond <laughs> yeah that's real that's that's real love that's real family to me you know and it's like and for that most is like I would give them every last drop of my money if I if they needed it. Like that, that's how it is. Like that's that's how I look at it and that's how I look at me. So money was never a factor. And I think that was the biggest thing about building a bond, right? It's like when you get on girlfriend or you get on wife and money is the thing that dictates that relationship. That's not really a relationship. Yeah. It's <laughs> right? conditional. Like, you know I mean? It's conditional. It's conditional. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what we don't have. We don't have conditions. All they care about is you putting in the time. And that's something that our Gracie Gracie Technics um, has taught has taught us. You know, Rylan, Lazarus, and Ivan is the time you put. You cannot. You can give me twenty dollars, and I can give you twenty dollars back. But I cannot give you twenty dollar twenty minutes that you gave me. I cannot give you your twenty minutes. I can give you my twenty minutes, but the time you put into me is not something I can I can give back to you. So those are the things like I feel that they've established with us and the fighters and how we keep it small knit and close. Like you said, like they don't want to do the interviews because that's not what they're about. And I ain't jogging any other all the coaches. I just not I just letting you know like they're there for me. And I know that. <laughs> so thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you, coaches. Sure. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, you you do see that a lot, man. It might not be out there in the media, but behind the scenes yeah. you hear a lot of stuff. Myself cover the sport. I, I, I hear so much. <laughs> I see it, and I'm not, I'm not even looking for it, yeah. and I see it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, it's like, I get it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard to find it's hard to find true, genuine people that are actually there for your well being, not your brand. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Like the brand is the icing on the cake for them helping you uh, and you enhancing your brand. But it's just like, okay, if you was in fighting, what is the relationship? I knew if I still if I quit fighting, my coaches would still be there for me, training mm -hmm. me full time. Because it wasn't about the money, huh? it was about my progression, yeah. my well-being, my well, relationship with them. You know, if you follow yeah. the headlines, right, MMA news, Joshua Fabio's out there, you know what I mean, doing his thing. Like, you just talked about it, like, out there being the, the headline maker and stuff. And it's kind of sad, right, to see someone that has put their whole life, yeah. like Diego Sanchez, into the sport. And a guy comes yeah, in yeah, and tries yeah. to take over. Well, I mean, it's it's well, weird, right? Part is like I don't like I said. There's a lot of politics on that, and it's obvious that this dude, this man, has made an impact on Diego's life, and it's contradicting his brand. Regardless, um, you know what I mean? How it is is just like obviously, no matter all the 
the bad negativity Josh brought to Diego's brand. Like, Diego's still with the fool. He's still, you know what I mean? So it's something, there must be a misconnection or a misunderstanding on something. So I ain't going to judge what's going on. That's very, very unfortunate, you know, that they kind of collaborate and come to something that would help the brand. And now there's all these people hating on, 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 on that, on that, the aspect of that coaching and the student or whatnot and it's just like damn that's unfortunate like when i see them they're very cordial and they're cool and they ain't trying to give me any weird vibes but i mean like i said they have a relationship you know what i mean and it's still stronger than all the hate that everybody are giving them so i mean for that part it's like bro i don't pay diego or joshua's bills i don't take care of their kids their responsibilities bro and you know what i don't deal with the hate that people are putting on them and they still seem like peaceful individuals. So I hope the best for them. You know, it's unfortunate with what's going on, but when I see them, I'll shake their hand and say, what's up? Like their problems is their problems and I ain't going to judge them, but I respect the relationship they have with each other. And I respect how they're dealing with it. They're not being ignorant or um, ignorant or, you know, doing stupid, stupid shit to the public or hating on what the public says. They just, they speaking their truth, and whether people disagree with it or agree with it, like that's their truth, bro. And let them do their thing. Like political, bro. Get over it. Like yeah, people just want to be entertained, bro. That kind of stuff doesn't entertain me. Yeah, that kind of drama doesn't entertain me. Like, oh, Josh Fabia ruining his career. I'm like, man, that's unfortunate, but that's not entertaining. That's not something for me to pass judgment on. Like I said, bro, it always goes to fuck. I don't pay his bills. I ain't dealing with Josh. Diego is, you know what I mean? And it seems like Diego's fine, bro. You know, and, and like I know it's just I have things I can take and not take from his coaching. And I use it with mine, bro. All I do is collect data. I don't judge him and be like, oh, they're crazy. What the hell is going on? Uh, take care of your responsibilities, bro. <laughs> you got kids. Huh? That's a great that, that's a great and perspective, man. The whole world on that situation. Me that. With all this chaos, I cannot control what's not going down or what I cannot control. It's out of my hands, bro. 2020 showed me that. You know what I mean? I haven't fought in 15 months, but why the hell I gonna get crazy for? I gotta be. I gotta learn how to be peaceful. There's all other. There's all these other things playing factors. There's people in India dying, bro. <laughs> Every day, you know they saying like there's so much things um that can go on, and just people always worry about everything else. You know what I mean? Worrying about Joshua, worrying about Diego, and I'm just like, bro, let the fans. Do that. <laughs> Oh, right, they definitely do that, but they entertain, and you know what? I got these. That's it, you know. And everything I've been doing led me to next week. That's what I'm gonna do next week. Take care of possibilities and stay peaceful with all this chaos going on. When you sit back, man, and 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 think about it, like the performance, Finish, like what do you see? Always, what do you I envision? Have, I don't. I don't have predictions. I have intent, right? And if I ain't trying to punch a head off, I'm trying to rip it off. I've always tried to show that. I think UFC knows that because I had three straight losses and they ain't be they ain't be cutting me yet. Because I know that when I get in there, I'm gonna show that I'm there to kill and I'm there to finish. It's either the, the refs gonna save me and get and gonna get you off of me, or that's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? I'm looking to get not leave this leave, not leave my decision to the judges and let the ref save the guy because I ain't you know I'm there to do my job. Yeah, pick you up after <laughs> after the finish. <laughs>